I'd say my last foundry has seen better days. And while she worked great, the way I built her was potentially dangerous. In this video, we are gonna build a new foundry. Let's get started. To start out with, we need a frame before I used a bucket. This time I'm gonna use this old smoker that I never really liked, to be honest with you. I gave it a little shot with the pressure washer just to clean it off a little bit. Took out the grill and all that junk and uh, it's still kind of dirty inside. So we need to get this sanded and then I think painted. Some of you might be saying, hey Project, why'd you get the inside all nice and clean and shiny, but you left the outside all dull and crappy? And the answer to that question is, I'm going to be using this sodium silicate water glass as a high temperature sealant to put the fiber insulation on the lid, as well as the inside of the thing, which also means that I'm going to need to clean up the inside as well. Now on the outside, I'm just going to be using this high temp caliper paint that's good to 600 degrees. So I just need to scuff it up, make sure it's fairly clean and the paint should stick no problem. And just like that, we're a hell of a lot cleaner. It's not perfect, but it will do. So now we can go ahead and move on to paint. So normally I would paint something like this outside, but today it's a really windy day. And so I'm left with painting it inside the garage, which is not the best option, but that's how we're gonna do it. All right, there's our first of two coats. And this is the mess you get from painting inside. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. When I decided I was gonna make a new foundry, I went ahead and ordered this one inch by 24 inch by 60 inch KOO insulation. I originally I was gonna do the two inch. I wanted at least two inches of insulation on the sides of the foundry, but I found that the two inch was more expensive than the one inch and I got more length from the one inch. So I just ordered more of it for the same price of the two inch and I'll just double it up. In addition, I ordered these four and a half inch by two and a half inch by nine inch uh, insulating fire bricks that are good to 2,700 degrees. I've already put three of the fire bricks in the foundry with my old crucible and that raises it up uh, to two and a half inches and what it does is allow me to double up this insulating blanket uh, twice as high because it's 24 inches thick and I got about 10 inches to the lid. So uh, you can see my old crucible in there and it should be just fine. So the next step is to get all this insulation in here, get the fire bricks. The fourth fire brick I'm going to cut in half and put on the sides here. All right, I got the last two pieces cut. There's one and two. Now keep in mind the insulation is gonna come out fairly far, so it's gonna cover a lot of that. I've seen a lot of guys, they just put the one brick in there and I got the four, so I'm gonna use them. kind of big and I still have a gap here. That's fine for this first layer. In fact, we can probably have this little bit of extra right here. We can just shove that in there.
All right, we have our two layers of one inch K wool insulation. I could do a third layer. I have a whole nother box of insulation right there, but I think two inches is going to be enough. And I wanna leave room for a bigger crucible just in case I wanna melt some serious metal. So the next step would be to insulate the lid, which is gonna be a little tricky and where a lot of people have problems. Some people use construction cloth to keep the insulation in there. What I'm going to do is do kind of a cinnamon roll. I'm gonna roll the insulation up so it kind of friction fits in there. And then I'll use the sodium silicate, which I think I've been pronouncing wrong this whole video, Bruh. to kind of glue it in there. Now, the one other issue we're gonna have is the hole is not centered. One, because I wanted to keep my handle, even though it may melt, we'll see. Um, if I just drill a hole or bore a hole through the insulation straight down, we're gonna hit the other insulation. So we're gonna have to do it at an angle, just right through there to the where the crucible sits in the center. I think we can do that, and I think it'll work out really good. It'll kind of exhaust off to the side here, away from the handle, so hopefully it won't melt. But we'll see. So on to the lid. Okay, well, there's my foundry cinnamon roll. I think it turned out pretty good. The little divot in the back, I'll take care of that off, uh, off camera, no big deal. You can see in the middle there, it's raised, which is perfect, because that'll fit and seal around this area right in here and give us a really good seal. I'm gonna wait for the uh, sodium silicate to kind of harden. It won't cure until it's heated, but it'll harden up. I'll bore the hole through uh, to the middle section for our exhaust. We need to install the burner on the main body, and then we can coat everything in this 100 HT ceramic coating that is supposedly supposed to really increase the efficiency of the foundry. It reflects the heat really well, and it also keeps this uh, kale wool together and kind of binds everything together. So that'll be next. In case anyone's wondering, that is what's left of the two packages of one inch by 24 inch by 60 inch kale wool insulation that I ordered. We used damn near all of it. And uh, yeah, no, I did not burn my garage door by having my old foundry too close to it. Just that, that never happened. Well, admittedly, that was a terrible plan, but it did work. I mostly just used the razor knife. The hole saw did help to kind of get it uh, going once, once I kind of loosened up some of the material, but we do have a hole in there and in the center on this side. So it worked. <laughs> Okay, I got that hose clamp on there much better, and that thing's not going anywhere now. The inside looks fine. Unfortunately, I should have planned that better. That's right where that seam was. I would have liked to not do it at that seam, but it is kind of glued together, so it's not a huge issue. The only thing is it's I need a little more insulation right there, so I'll put some there with some sodium silicate, and that should seal that up fine. And then we can put that 100 HT ceramic coating on and we'll be about done. We're gonna go ahead and mix up this 100 HT ceramic coating. I got this off Amazon. It wasn't cheap. I wanna say it was 30 or $40. It comes in looking like uh, like sewage, pretty much. Uh, it doesn't smell too great either. I wouldn't recommend smelling it, uh, but it's kinda of brown and has this kind of poop water on the side of it here. Anyways, you're supposed to mix it two to one two parts the 100 HT to one part water. I have some distilled water for batteries and stuff, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. Don't add anything to the mix. And then we'll start painting it on.
while we're waiting for the 100 HT to dry, I wanna go over the gas system I use as it's a little bit different than a lot of the other YouTubers who use a Venturi system. I used a forced air system, and the components of the system are an air source, which is this Harbor Freight shop vac that's been awesome, a dimmer switch to control the output of the shop vac, and then for safety, I put this uh, gas solenoid that allows me to cut the gas off with a flip of a switch. Now in the past I had these components just kind of kludged together since we're doing a new forge I want to kind of put a little control box together. Alright this is what I came up with for a control box for the foundry. It's just a wooden box that I had laying around from another project. It already had the Ford gang muttering in it so why not just use it. On the left here we have where you plug the shop vac in this dimmer switch controls this plug so you can turn on and off the shop vac as well as vary the output of the shop vac, which is very useful. We have a switch to control the gas valve. If we need to cut the gas to the foundry quickly, we can just flip that switch, gas shuts off, no turning a knob on the tank or anything like that. The last thing is I, I didn't really have anything to put in this spot and so it would have been an open hole. Uh, but I found this GFCI that I had for a previous project so I just threw it in there. It gives a added safety, and if we needed to cut the power to the whole thing, we could hit this test button and it would cut the whole power. On the back, we have a quick disconnect for the solenoid valve, as well as a plug for AC power. Inside, on the back right there, is a regula regulated power supply that I had laid around from something. I took it from some kind of electronics. It puts out 11 volts at about 1.7 amps, which is just enough to drive that solenoid. I've already tested it. It works great. Uh, I just hot glued it down in there so it's not going anywhere. The only thing that I really need to do is fill that hole right there because as you see, uh, AC power is coming into those terminals and I'd hate to freaking reach into that damn thing and shock myself. So besides that, screw this lid on, fix that hole, probably just cover it with some tape or something like that, and we should be good to go. All right, guys, well, I think that is a successful foundry build. I wanted to end this video with us actually melting some metal, but my crucible is pretty old and I don't feel confident using it, so I need to get a new one. And I can't find my ingot mold, so even if we melted metal, I don't know where we would pour it. But that's just a good reason for you to subscribe and tune in next time because we will definitely be using this foundry to melt some metal. And uh, if you want to see some of my old, older uh, casting videos, I'll throw them up here in the end screen, and I will see you guys next time.